All right, so take a moment, read this problem, try it on your own, and pause the video. In this problem, they want to know what the roots of this equation are, and the equation is 4x squared minus 100 equals 0. Remember that roots represent um, the zeros of your parabola. So that just means if you were to take some kind of graph of this function, right? We know it's a parabola because x is being squared and there are no other powers involved, no thirds or fourths or so forth. And here when you have a parabola, you're going to have a smile or a frown, right? Some kind of shape like this. And in most of the cases we look at here, there are always roots to deal with. I mean, you could raise this parabola up here and ha have no roots, but roots are where the graph crosses the x-axis, right? This is, these are the roots, root and root. So when you have roots, you have a height of zero. They're on the x-axis. That's why these equations are set to zero. You're finding the x-values. The x-values are the points where the height of the graph is zero. Now here, to do that, you could plug both you know, the numbers in and see what works. Um, but I think a more proficient way, and, and one that represents a uh, deeper understanding of the algebra here, is to factor. Because we're subtracting, and when you see a subtraction of two terms, you might think right away that this is the difference of two squares. Right? 100 is a, squ a square, and so is 4x squared. So if you see subtraction of two terms, try to use the difference of two squares. Remember what that says. I'll show it over here. Let's see you have x squared minus a squared, these two squares. It factors into x minus a and x plus a, right? This always works. You have alternating signs. The first term is the square root of the first term. The first term in the factored form is the square root of the first term in the unfactored form. And the second term in the factored form is the square root of the second term in the unfactored form. You can test this out using some kind of multiplication technique like FOIL or whatever you use x squared plus ax minus ax and then minus a squared. Notice when we do this, these terms here cancel out and what's left is x squared minus a squared. Now that's not a pattern you have to memorize. Um, you could prove it by just playing around with these things. If you think it's alternating signs, if you think it's x minus a times x plus a, start with that, multiply it out to confirm that you get the right result. Sometimes people put two pluses here, or two minuses. Just try them out, try to multiply them, and you'll see that none of them will get you the difference of two squares, except when the signs alternate. So here that just means that, let's factor to 10 and minus 10, the square root of 100, and we have 2x here and 2x there, right? So now this equals zero. So in order for the whole thing to equal zero, this number could be zero, right? Because zero times anything is zero. Or this number could be zero. Again, because zero times anything is zero. Or they both could be zero, of course. So let's assume the first number is zero. 2x minus 10 is zero. Let's solve for x. Figure out what x value would give us zero here. Right? We set it up. 2x is 10. Divide by 2 on both sides. The first answer is x is 5. Now the second answer, we have 2x plus 10 equals 0, 0, sorry, subtract 10 from both sides, 2x equals negative 10, divided by 2, and the other answer is x is negative 5. So the two answers, x could be plus or minus 5, choice 3. You might also see it written like this, plus or minus 5. Okay, hope this helped.